Hello, um, hi, I'm going to be talking about Literally Show Me a Healthy Person by Darcy Wilder. This is a novel, 97 pages, published in 2017. I really love this book. At times it reads like a journal, a private Twitter account, or Finsta. It's intimate and chronological, but also like a focused memoir, having short essays, uh, it's like an edgy social media page, but without reblogs or reposts. So, so to guide this review, um, you know, I wrote some questions. How does it relate to your own reading or writing practice? So I write constantly and just journaling all the time. And the quote on the front, it says, this book is funny and wild and free. This book is the future of writing. Uh, that's Scott McClanahan. And I think that this is how people have been writing. This is how people have been thinking. But there's just new ways of collecting this material and expressing your thoughts and putting it into book format and having it be successful on a commercial enterprise scale. And I'm sure it's not, you know, like mass money profit coming off of this book, but. Um, you know, people think like this, people thought like tweets, even though Twitter surely influences how we think, just in the same way that TikTok or memes makes us think in different ways, but, you know, something made Twitter into a, you know, easy to use format, you know, people didn't, weren't all writing books, but they were having thoughts that other people could relate to and that resonated with them. Um, so the publisher is Tyrant Books. Um, so it reminded me of Prozac Nation by Elizabeth Wurzel, which is a memoir having to do with dysfunction, both internally and in inter interpersonal relationships. Prozac Nation in this book both devote space to unpacking the mother-daughter relationship and firsthand experience. And, and, contem and contemplating the violence and confusion that the authors went through in childhood. Both books recall drug use and sex and unsatisfying relationships. Both books are um, by young women questioning their lives and their environment, um, you know, taking note of the ways that they cope in dangerous ways and writing down their observations. They're unhappy, and I'd say both books end with seeking change and help. You know, that writing was leading to something, or, you know, by the end of the book, talking about rehab, or, you know, yeah, finding some kind of, like, way to no longer live, you know, this way. Um, so, now we have a section, I'm gonna just you know, uh, say some of the quotes from the books that I enjoyed, the ones that I wanted to save for later. Um, and then, so I have the page numbers of where I'm reading uh, in the document that is attached to this video. It's a link to a Google Doc, likely. Um, so if you want page numbers, that's where that those are. On Sam's... On a roof, Sam's yelling at me to ditch manipulative men, and he's looking in my eyes and saying, you have a voice. My mom and dad met in the Manhattan criminal courts and decided to make a tragically flawed system of their own. They fucked on the first date and moved in two weeks later. I'm the kid you're thinking about when you look at your friend and hope they never have kids. I told dad he doesn't know what it's like to celebrate Christmas when your mom died on Christmas. I told him he doesn't know what it's like to lose a parent, and he said, yeah, I know, that's my burden. April 29th, April 28th, 2013, 1.54 p.m., I'm looking at a dog with no eyes. So here's this uh, note of my own. Um, I like when novels use precise dates and times. I think it makes it more relatable, like we have a shared context. Like, I was also doing something on April 28th, in 2013 at 1 54 p.m. you know it creates this shared time you know even if we're not in the same place it's um you know a moment where you know people can reclaim a consciousness you know people relate over what they were doing 
when 9-11 happened, for example, um, it's like, okay, we, we t- I text someone and in this moment, you know, you see someone's typing, you're not in the same place at all, but you feel that you're with them somehow because you're doing the same thing. Um, so this next section I'm reading is all in order. It's the same page, so it can just give you a sense of what reading the book is like. And I'll just show you how pages look, is that, <clears throat> you know, they are paragraphs, um, but they're largely one-liners or, you know, a, a few sentences, maybe one sentence, you know, maybe no punctuation. And um, so that's what it looks like. So here I'm going to read. This is from page uh, 48. Excuse me. My last work crush was a 5'2", 55-year-old publicist from Newark, New Jersey, who refused to participate in group conversation. My first kiss and my last kiss won't tell me their last names. I found out his last name by looking at his subscription to Modern Cat magazine. I broke my foot on my birthday, running after my ex and his girlfriend. At the gym, the urban warrior trainer yelled 424-2420 at us over a 10-year-old Jay-Z song. Then we did squats to my ex's favorite Drake track. I only date musicians and no one's ever written a song about me. Jamie said he was, uh, but that, but when he emailed it to me, he said it, it isn't really about any one thing anymore. Jamie was sitting in Starbucks when he got hit by a car. In his bed the first time, I asked what the scars were, and he said he couldn't kiss me. Jamie stopped texting me when his wife heard me say I should have dated you while they were teaching me how to throw up, and because I kept and because I kept texting him, I loved you. Do people ever say I love you before the breakup? They put down the knives when I screamed until I couldn't breathe, and mom and and mom or dad gave me water in the empty jelly jar with gonzo on the front, but my throat still felt cut and raw and bleeding and I couldn't talk anymore. Dad was still in the corner in front of the windows with mom standing in front of him holding the with mom standing in front of him holding the chef's knife when he grabbed it and stepped so his shoes broke the tip and he grabbed all the other knives and broke off all their tips and now he doesn't have any knives with any tips and when I asked him um, what, hap- what would happen if they'd stayed married, he said that they'd kill each other. Um, so that's the end of the page. <laughs> um, more bits that I want to save. We have, Once I tried to throw my life away for the alcoholic cashier at a chain skateboard shop in the Westchester Mall, but he was like, nah. I don't think I'm better than anyone else. I'd just rather be this fucked up than any than someone else. Is it more embarrassing to want a boyfriend or to want to fuck? I'm doing good. This is just how I sound when I'm doing good. Write sentences. Give head. Call it a life. I'm trying to take a selfie. It's not working. Can you trust that I'm hot? Cool people have tried to make me come. Imagine after you die, your body gets deep fried and dipped in ranch dressing. Uh, I thought it was interesting how only, so this is just me, not the book. I thought it was interesting how only 70% of the way through the book did I start laughing out loud regularly. I think I, I took it seriously at first, you know, still amused at times and finding humor, but I didn't note the book as funny until I was almost done. Um, like, I think I was thinking that it was more true and tragic and not in a pitiful way but in a realistic way you know it just seemed like these are the things people think and yeah sure at times something might be amusing but more so it was just kind of the fact of their observations um but on this note um darcy writes People laugh if you say something serious in the tone of something funny. If you say something funny in the tone of something serious, they block your phone number. And yeah, if if I knew someone who talked like this book reads or how, you know, she writes in real time, it would be hard to be around them maybe. 
I don't know. I mean, I mean, nobody really talks the way they tweet, right? Um, but it's so much like a journal, you know, that kind of honesty on a, this like unrelenting, like really like in awe of just how consistent, um, you know, the notes that they're taking and the honesty, the level of honesty that's here, it would be, you know, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a, I think it'd be hard to, you know, witness someone and um, maybe just judging on the amount of like responsibility or involvement that you have in this person's life. Um, you know, I mean, I think she would agree that at this time in her life, she would be a difficult person to be around, maybe. Um, but yeah, that's something. Um, so I love how it's largely one-liners. There's a story going on, right? Like it's, you know, over a period of time and you can follow it and, you know, chronological and it's written in present tense. Um, and it's visual and it has, you know, a story like movie like progression, but it's also succinct and not concerned with describing the places like their interior design. It's not romantic about setting or detail um, of, you know, how a person looks or how they move. Um, it's fast paced. It's not dwelling or pondering, you know, intentionally taking time to think. Uh, but more so taking note of the patterns and living and picking up on these recurring themes. Um, they don't write as if they know, you know, that they're the authority on something, but they write with a sureness of what has happened in their life and um, not trying to sh save face or reputation. You know, I don't, I don't know if it's really self-deprecating, um, maybe in a way, but it's more so it's not self-aggrandizing. It's not, you know, trying to put themselves on a pedestal or, you know, claim any kind of, um, holiness or, um, you know, merit that isn't obvious from just what they write and like the power of that. I don't know if it's power, the, I don't know, the significance of just their first-hand experience. Okay, so um, the space paragraphs and lines, you know, when I showed how the book is written, I think that made it really, it made it easy to go back and find passages that I wanted to reproduce um, because I could just skim it for words. You know, it's topical. Um, it's like keywords, you know, less... Um, there's not a lot of fluff, you know, it's really concise. Um, let's see. More quotes. <clears throat> Rejection is just like any other drug in that they won't tell you what it's cut with. My horoscope says I'm in a healing crisis. I mean, opportunity. I miss when I thought California could save me. Never mind, I tried this pewter eyeshadow and now my life is perfect. Unfortunately, I have yet to find anything more funny than my own pain and suffering. Another guy that doesn't do relationships got a girlfriend. I wish my exes thought about me as much as their girlfriends do. Game show called That Feeling is Also Pain. Uh, I was borrowing this book, but I think I'm going to buy a copy for my own collection. I looked at Darcy's Twitter, um, which is, you know, active. They're, you know, writing... Uh, hello, Darcy, if you watch this video. Um, but, so yeah, on Darcy's Twitter, which is like at 33333 or something like that. They're also on Instagram. Um, the pin post on Twitter is a link to buy the book where um, Darcy gets the most like money, um, you know, percentage off of the sale. Um, and that's, um, yeah, so that's all. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Bye.